All right, everybody, welcome to um, our topic as we continue to talk about President Johnson this week. We're going to look at President Johnson and the Great Society and look at a lot of his domestic policies and domestic agenda today. <clears throat> so our objectives and standards to describe the purpose uh, behind the Great Society agenda and to identify legislation that impacts Americans in relationship to the Great Society. And take a moment there to read the standards, if you would, please. So what changes were made to American society due to Johnson's Great Society agenda? That's our desired result for today. <clears throat> so some of the things that are brought about in Johnson's Great Society agenda are um, education. So between 1965 and 1966, President Johnson and his administration introduced many bills to Congress. <coughs> they believed that education was essential uh, to his Great Society agenda. I believe Johnson was a former school teacher from Texas, so education was a topic that was uh, passionate and dear to his heart. The Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965 provided over $1 billion in federal aid to public and parochial schools to buy supplies such as textbooks and library materials. He also helped with higher education or colleges and universities. Uh, the Higher Education Act was passed in 1965 and provided funding for scholarships and low interest loans for college students. Uh, Johnson also supported the arts. The Kennedys had um, kind of done this prior, but Johnson also continues this with, in 1965, the National Foundation uh, on the Arts and Humanities was established financially supported uh, painters, musicians, artists, actors, things like that. Television for the Mind. In 1967, a uh, corporation for public broadcasting is created. Um, PBS today, some of you may know that today, PBS is still around today. Uh, and it was formed to fund educational television and radio broadcasting. Uh, some of its programs, Sesame Street comes about later on. Uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, that was one of my favorites. Barney, if you remember Barney, the Purple Dinosaur. Um, my sister liked that show. But again, PBS is still on television today. For those of you who have younger siblings or uh, children, uh, may, may recognize that. Um, and it still provides educational benefits to this day. Healthcare. Uh, President Johnson and Congress also made changes uh, in relationship to Social Security. Remember, Social Security was established under... President Roosevelt during the Great Depression um, to help the elderly or uh, people who could afford health care. Um, they established what Johnson does is established Medicare and Medicaid. Now, Medicare provides hospital insurance and low cost medical insurance for almost every American over the age of 65. OK, so this helps retired people or elderly people with uh, health care. Uh, cost. My grandmother and my grandfather, before he passed away, were on it. Um, you know, it, it helps supplement or helps cover some of those medical costs that maybe other insurances that they have won't cover. Medicaid extends health insurance to those on welfare. So this could be working mothers who don't have, um, you know, medical coverage for their children under, jo uh, under their job or uh, other people who might not be able to physically work or for whatever case. <coughs> so this provides <coughs> health insurance to those. And both these are still around today. Housing. Johnson and the Congress made decisions that moved power away from rural areas, such as farming and agriculture, to urban centers, such as the cities. Okay, uh, They're going to fund some 240,000 units for low rent public housing and helping families pay for private housing. Remember, we talked about kind of the decline in the 1950s, people moving out of the cities, um, you know, housing was kind of in decline in the cities. So Johnson is going to try to improve that. They also established the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, still around today as well. Um, and this included the first African-American member of the cabinet, Robert Weaver, as secretary of HUD. Um, so this was a big move too, obviously for civil rights um, and for African-Americans as well. Immigration. 
the Great Society also focused on immigration policies. Uh, remember, some of you had were, in, were with us, some of you were not. Um, immigration quotas had been established in the 1920s um, at, during the first Red Scare, and they set a limit on people from different countries and banned other people entirely, such as Asians. Now, the Immigration Act <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> of 1965 will allow non-Europeans to emigrate by ending this quota system. So people from Asian nations, from Afri African nations, from Latin American nations. So from non-European nations will be able to come to the country again. The environment. A woman by the name of Rachel Carson had authored uh, Silent Spring in 1962. And she had exposed the hidden dangers of pesticides. And President Kennedy, uh, before he was assassinated, was aware of this as well and trying to support the environment. Um, and this will help usher in the Water Quality Act of 1965, which requires states to clean up their rivers. So this allows you to have safe drinking water. You're not drinking pesticides in your water, hopefully. Um, that's the whole idea behind this. President Lyndon Johnson also ordered the government to search out the worst chemical companies that were polluters as well and to find out uh, what they could do to uh, change that. <clears throat> consumer protection. Uh, there were also laws passed to protect we, the consumers, when we go to the store to buy food or other items. Uh, they required companies to have labels for consumer products, such as uh, medicine, like, you know, different warning labels, you know, don't take this medicine with, um, you know, alcohol, or don't don't drive if you're using this medicine, you know, or take this medicine with food or something like that. So, you know, different warning labels. It also required automobile and tire standards um, that were followed by the awareness made by a young lawyer by the name of Ralph Nader. He would later run for president. <coughs> <coughs> as well, but um, not to be concerned with that right now, but um, helping to make sure that like seat belts and tires were safe and things like that. And also the Wholesome Meat Act of 1967 will set precautions for food as well, making sure our meat and our food um, is safe to eat. And fighting poverty, again, big part of Johnson's uh, agenda uh, was poverty. 1964, the Tax Reduction Act cut taxes for individuals and corporations, and in 1965, uh, the Appalachian Regional Development Act provided aid to economically depressed regions uh, in terms of highways, health centers, and other resources. See this picture down here, uh, the Appalachian Mountains, a lot of areas or uh, towns and cities in, in that kind of Appalachian Mountain area, that former kind of coal and um, area and places like that. Uh, suffered from economic decline, so Johnson's going to look to uh, support those areas as well. So, okay, our closure. So, what changes happened to uh, American people and society as a result of the Great Society programs and policies? Think about that. That will hopefully help you answer your question at the end there, and I hope you have a great rest of your day or night. Talk to you soon.